Welcome to Be Free, where faith and forgiveness leads to freedom. I'm Ashley Gronholm, and today I'm bringing a wonderful word out of the book of Revelation that I believe is going to really open your eyes to notice some interesting details out of Revelation chapter 5 that I believe is going to be very meaningful for you. We're talking about who is worthy to open the scrolls, the seven seals, who is worthy If we know our Bibles, then we know that Jesus Christ is the only one who is worthy. But it's interesting to me how John the Revelator, when he was having these visions that God was giving him about these scenes in heaven that we now read in the book of Revelation, John had an interesting moment where he was uncertain that anyone could open the scroll in heaven. Let me read to you out of Revelation chapter 5, verse 1 through 4 and 5. And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back. So there was writing on the front and the back of the scroll and sealed with seven seals. So imagine a scroll with seven red wax seals across this long scroll. And he says, then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals? And no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. So I wept much, this is John speaking, because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. But one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so John here is having this moment where for just a few seconds of time, perhaps, he believed that there was no one worthy to open the scroll. And he had such expectation, just a a, deep desire to know what the contents of that scroll were, what what was in the scroll, what was it going to say? And when he thought that there was no one to open the scroll, he was devastated. He was weeping. And then the angel announces, there is one who is worthy to open the scroll. It's Jesus Christ. Now we know that the angel is referencing Jesus Christ because of the words that we're reading here about Jesus, the lion of the tribe of Judah, that's a reference to Jesus. And the root of David is a reference to Jesus and the one who has conquered or prevailed. And we know that's Jesus. So how wonderful that we get to see in the scripture that Jesus is the only one who is worthy to open the scroll in heaven and to break the seven seals and to basically partner with God the Father and the Holy Spirit and Jesus together partnering to open these seals in heaven so that the end time events could come forth. You know, it's interesting if you can just go with me for a minute about the history of a seal and why the seals were something that John saw at that time. Because in in the time and the days of Jesus, these important communications that went out between kings, between royalty, their correspondence or their writings, if you will, they were sealed with hot wax. In fact, the king would take the ring that he wore on his finger. It had a certain seal or a crest, like a signature today, like how we would sign a document with our handwriting. Back in the time of Jesus, the kings and the rulers of the land, they would take their ring with the seal, they would dip it in the hot wax, and then they would place it on the, on the, on the edge of a document that was rolled up. The papyrus paper was rolled up like a scroll and they would seal it with their ring. And so dipping their, their ring into the hot wax, placing it on the scroll, that would seal the scroll so that it wouldn't open up and reveal its contents. So I think that's really interesting and and compelling that here's this scroll in heaven and it's got seven distinct seals upon it. And only Jesus, 
only Jesus is able to break the seal and open the scroll and reveal its contents. Hallelujah. Why Jesus? Why only Jesus? Why not one of the 24 elders or the four living creatures or, you know, just a, a, the, the reference to uh, the different um, people who were in heaven, the, the, the saints in heaven? Why only Jesus? Because Jesus is the only one who is worthy. Jesus is the only one who has the authority to break those seals because he is King of Kings. He is Lord of Lords, and he is the one who came to this earth to become the lamb who was slain, to die for our sins. And he is the one who is operating with all power and authority. Jesus Christ, the only one, the only one who can open the scrolls because he is the only one that has all power and authority to do so. Hallelujah. It's just very interesting to me how we see in heaven these events taking place. And it matters because if we understand the scripture, then we're seeing the value of being worthy. We're understanding that Jesus had to go through many, many things to be worthy to open the scroll. Only Jesus. Hallelujah. And when this elder said to John, stop weeping, look, the mighty lion of Judah's tribe, the root of David, he has conquered. He is worthy and he will open the scrolls. It's a very, very interesting and powerful moment in heaven. Very powerful moment in heaven. So what we need to know is that if we are going to be in a relationship with Jesus and have our faith in him, then we are going to be people of God who will be able to submit to Jesus and receive the power and the authority that he is offering to us. He is our spiritual covering. He is King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and he cares about what happens to you. In the end times, there are going to be situations, there are going to be certain events that unfold, and we need to know where we are going to stand. Are we going to be on the side of King Jesus, or are we going to agree with the world? Are we going to trust King Jesus, that he is worthy, and that he is faithful and true? Or are we going to side with or agree with or line up with the world and the people, the trends, the culture of the world? This is a really important question to ask yourself today because if you pick the wrong team, the results that will follow could be perilous. And as we begin to look at the scripture over these next several episodes, we're going to look at and read the scripture and understand what happens when each one of these seals are opened and what it means for you and me. We need to know and be informed so that we can prepare our hearts, prepare our minds, prepare ourselves spiritually for what is coming. You know, we don't want to be like the five virgins. There's the parable of the 10 virgins, but the five virgins who were without oil when Jesus came, when the bridegroom comes for his bride, we've got to be ready. Amen. We've got to be people who are prepared so that as these seven seals are opened on the scroll, we will be ready for what is coming. And we will know how to discern in the spirit because we have a relationship with Jesus, because we've submitted to Jesus as our King and our high priest then we will be able to discern the signs and the times and to be able to prepare ourselves so that we won't be caught off guard, as the scripture says, like a thief in the night and surprised when the events of Matthew 24, the end time events, begin to unfold. In fact, they're even unfolding now as we speak. There are events that are coming forth 
that are taking place. They're called birth pains in the book of Revelation. There are things happening in our lives, in our world, situations, government situations, a lot of things coming forth that are becoming troubling. Amen. They're becoming disturbing and they're starting to affect our lives, aren't they? We've seen things like a global pandemic. We're seeing 71,000 Americans in 2021 dying from overdoses of fentanyl. We're seeing our youth committing suicide. We're seeing our young people giving themselves over to witchcraft and sorcery and Satan worship and confusion over gender identity. We're seeing our public schools actually telling parents, I'm sorry, you don't have a say in what we do to your child. What? How did this even happen? We've got to understand we're in the end times and there are events unfolding right now before our very eyes that if we are wise and have wisdom to discern it, we'll see it. There are events unfolding that are pointing to the day when Jesus begins to open the first seal on the scroll, seven seals that he will open. But before that, there are birth pains. There are signs of the end times. Just as we read out of Matthew 24, earthquakes in diverse places, famines, pestilences, um, there's inflation, there's issues with our ability to buy bread, to work. There's that risk of the mark of the beast coming. I know all of this isn't very encouraging, but actually it is. Because if we can open our eyes, if we can pay attention to what is happening, then we can prepare. And that is good news because who wants to be caught off guard? Who wants to be surprised by the thief in the night that comes in through the back door? No, we want to be prepared for anything in this hour. Amen. We want to know how to prepare. And you know, the consequences that follow after the seals are open, they will affect those who do not have the seal of God upon their foreheads. In earlier episodes, we looked into the scripture about that, about that seal of God upon our foreheads, the 144,000 with the seal of God on their foreheads. And what does that mean? It means that we have the mind of Christ. It means that we're in relationship with Jesus. It means that we know him and have a relationship with him through the infilling of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit sealing us to God. Hey everyone, if you've been blessed by this program, I'd like to invite you to consider becoming a partner of Be Free Ministry. With your help, we can win millions to Jesus and reach over 195 nations of the world. To give, simply download our app, Be Free Ministry International, or go to our website at BeFreeInChristMinistry.org. Together, we can carry the good news of Jesus Christ to the nations. Thank you so much for your gift, and God bless you. So those seals on that scroll, imagine that you're the scroll and that God has sealed you and that he wants to open up your life to him so that you can receive the contents of what he's placed inside. Hallelujah. It's, it's sort of a prophetic picture of our relationship with God. And so we want to be prepared because if we don't have the mind of Christ, then the scripture out of Revelation tells us what will be coming is that we'll take the mark of the beast. And we know the scripture says that the number 666 is the mark of the beast. What does that mean? Six is the number for humanity. It's the number for man. And we see it three times. 666 is a reference to the mark of the beast. And we don't want to take the mark of the beast. No, we want to have the mind of Christ. We want to know Jesus, worship Jesus, and be ready for his return. Hallelujah. So that's the good news that we can be ready for the return of Christ. We can be like those five virgins who had oil in their lamps and they were ready for Jesus when he came, when he opened up the banquet table, the banquet banqueting feast and invited them to the banquet table. 
We can be ready and we can enter in if we know the Word of God, if we have a relationship with Jesus, and we've allowed the Holy Spirit to seal us by faith to God. And that comes through trusting in Jesus. It's very encouraging, you know, really. The book of Revelation isn't meant to scare you or frighten you or to discourage you or give you reason to fear. In fact, it's telling you a perfect blueprint. It's giving you a perfect roadmap for how to be ready when Jesus comes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that is the good news that those who belong to Jesus, they will be spared from the calamities that will come forth when the seals are opened or broken. And those who have the mark or the seal of Jesus upon their foreheads, the seal of God upon their foreheads, they are the ones who will be protected and they will be spared. That's such good news. We know, and we'll look more into this as we discuss in, in further episodes, all the things that happen as each seal is opened. And it's quite detailed and not enough time for me to go into it today. But what we need to know for today is that each time a seal is opened, events occur. And these events that come forth are actually the judgments of God upon the world and people in the world who have chosen not to believe in Jesus. They've chosen not to line up with the truth and to receive protection from God. God is a God of love and mercy, but he is also a just God. And he will deal with the wicked in the future at that appointed time. So we must be prepared having the truth in our hearts that sets us free from the lies of the enemy. Hallelujah. Now I want to share with you out of Revelation 6.6 6, an interesting verse. But do not harm the olive trees producing oil and the vines producing wine. So we know in the scripture there's a lot of symbolism, there are metaphors, and here I want to break down for you what these metaphors are. Olive trees represent Jesus and our choice to abide in Him through a relationship with Him through faith. So the olive tree, remember in John 15, verse 4, Abide in me, this is Jesus talking, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides or connects to the vine, neither can you unless you abide. In me. Now, what does the word abide mean? It means trust, it means rest, it means believe, it means connect. A vine is connected to the tree. So Jesus is that olive tree and we are connecting to him. And the oil, we know that the olives that came off of the olive tree, when they were crushed, they produced oil through pressing and crushing. That wonderful oil was released. Oil represents the anointing of the Holy Spirit and the, and the Holy Spirit anointing you and me, anointing us with power so that we can do the very things that Jesus did under his name and his authority. We're not here on earth to just be powerless. We have the authority of Jesus Christ flowing through our veins. The blood of Jesus has been applied to us and we have the opportunity to operate in His authority and His power to release His power in the earth. What does that look like in a practical sense? Well, that looks like praying for the sick, healing the sick. It looks like operating in prophecy, in prophesying to encourage someone, to edify the church. It looks like raising the dead. If there's some situation where someone was taken before their time and you feel the Holy Spirit telling you to raise them up, we need to be people of faith that can operate that way. Amen. And I believe that God has called us to be powerful people. And yet sometimes we can be lulled to sleep, if you will, with just sort of this complacency in this part of the of the, of the world that we live in here in America, we don't see a lot of miracle signs and wonders happening. But I know from going to Africa that Holy Spirit is alive and well. Miracle signs and wonders are alive and well. 
and it is there for the taking, we can take hold of it and operate in the power of God. If we would just believe, if we would just have faith, we will be able to do those things to give God glory. Amen. So we also see vines producing wine. So wine is representing the grapes that are producing that wonderful juice, that wonderful wine, because after it's aged, it turns into wine. That is a picture of the glory, the goodness of God. It's the sweet wine. It's that sweet fragrance. And Jesus tells us that he saves the best wine for last. At the wedding feast in the scripture, they always drank wine in the days of Jesus. They, they believed and understood that there was just a wonderful time of celebration and joy to dine with one another, to, to dance and to banquet and to feast and to celebrate the wedding. It's a prophetic picture, really, of you and me and our relationship with Jesus. So back to Revelation 6.6, 6, do not harm the olive trees producing oil and the vines producing wine. What is that about? I believe it's about you and me. I believe that God is saying he's going to protect the ones who are in him, covered by his feathers. Psalm 91, he's protecting his people, his remnant people who are in relationship with him by faith and through the seal of the Holy Spirit. You see, Revelation is a wonderful book. When you start to see it prophetically, when you start to see the symbolism, the metaphors, and seeing us in that storyline, God was giving John the Revelator these unusual visions, but it's up to us through the power of the Holy Spirit to discern what he saw, to look at the meaning of the words in Hebrew and Greek. And that's how I'm sharing these truths with you. I've done that. And I've learned what these metaphors are really about. And it's so interesting. You know, Revelation 7, 3 says, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. So God is saying, we're going to protect our people. I'm going to protect my people. And I'm going to protect this place where they dwell until... I know that the seal of God is upon their foreheads. He gives us the time. There's an appointed time that's been allotted for us to come into a relationship with Jesus. But we must remember that there will be a time when that seventh seal is opened and the seven trumpets sound and the seven bowls of the wrath of God are poured out. Now that is not going to be a fun time. I believe that God has a plan for his people during that time, but we want to be prepared because that time will come. Amen. And remember that we all can boldly run to the throne of grace in our time of need when we have placed our faith in Jesus, Jesus, and trusted him for our salvation apart from our works and knowing that our good deeds can never save us. But we allow and invite the Holy Spirit to powerfully move in our lives in using all of our spiritual gifts, the prophetic ministry, prophecy, dreams and visions flowing, miracles, signs and wonders taking place and allowing the Holy Spirit to anoint us to do so. That's what being a remnant believer of Jesus Christ is all about. So I pray that this has been a powerful word for you today. I pray that it has touched your heart, that it's given you some things to think about because really we want to be people who are walking in victory and really making the best use of all the gifts and all of the opportunity that Jesus has given us to flow in the anointing, to be the people of God that he's created us to be. We know that the time is short. If we look into the scripture, we see how these events are all unfolding right now and that it's not time to sit back and relax, but it's time to get in the game. Amen. It's time to have hearts for revival, to see people getting saved, 
giving their lives to Jesus because it's God's heart that not one would be lost. He is giving us time to spread the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, to evangelize. That's why I'm sitting here before you sharing this message because God has put a burning desire in my heart to be a part of that great commission of saving souls because God loves us and he wants us to be with him in heaven. And we have that opportunity as we take hold of the truth of scripture and we really let it wash over our hearts. And you and I, we can speak the truth of Jesus. We can tell people about him. We can tell people about how God has changed our lives. We can be Christians who walk the walk and not just talk the talk. Amen. We can begin to pray and be serious about our prayer life so that we're fighting in the throne room of heaven through prayer, through worship, decreeing and declaring what should come to pass in the earth that Holy Spirit puts on your heart. Do you know that is what it means to be a prayer warrior? It doesn't mean that you read certain prayers every day and check off a box and say, I'm done. We should be worshiping with our whole hearts, worshiping Jesus and allowing Holy Spirit to rise up in us and give us revelation about what to pray, what to say, what to speak, decree and declare so that God's purposes will come to pass in the earth. And we can be part of that end time army preparing for the return of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God is so good. He's so faithful and he's victorious. And I pray that you will have a victorious day in him as you ponder some of these things and seek the Lord in prayer. I'm Ashley Gronholm. Have a victorious day in Christ. Spotify and Apple Music.